establishment of, of the Greenberg Bladder Cancer Institute is really going to be looked back in years to come as a sentinel event for bladder cancer research uh, on many fronts. I mean, the simple fact, the sheer dollar amount in terms of what we see in the press has been unprecedented for bladder cancer research. Um, to put that in perspective, if you look back in 2011, the entire NCI funding for bladder cancer was upwards of about 20 to 25 million for the entire country. So the, the Greenbergs, with their generous gift in, in the co-investment on Hopkins standpoint, looking at $45 million for bladder cancer specifically, uh, that's important because it sends the message to the broader philanthropic community, the research community, that there are dollars for bladder cancer. It, it's been a long time coming. We've not seen the number of new drugs developed for bladder cancer that we have seen in other cancers. And that's due to a number of factors. One, the technology and the science needed to catch up with the developments that are going on in other diseases. And two, we needed to have targets that showed encouraging results for bladder specifically. And right now we're seeing sort of the, the combination of both of those things happening at the same time. Uh, there are more agents in clinical development for bladder cancer now than there, there ever have been. Um, those have not translated yet into a new drug approved for bladder cancer specifically, but many of us who are involved in the clinic seeing these patients involved in the clinical and the translational research on the lab side feel like that's just around the corner, and I think it's given the entire field uh, enthusiasm, hope, and energy that we'll see improvements for our patients in the years to come. Just this past year, we had the publication of the Cancer Genome Atlas data for bladder cancer. And in simple terms, that took about 130 patients uh, who went to surgery for bladder cancer and profiled the genes of their cancer. That had never been done before, and we learned a tremendous amount from that effort about what genes are mutated or abnormal in those patients' cancers. And what that's done is give us a scorecard to start from. And I think that's given us some obvious targets that have drugs available in development right now. The second front that has happened is we've seen a revolution in immunologic therapy. Uh, this has been led by efforts in kidney cancer, melanoma, and lung cancer, but it is now feeding into other diseases. Bladder cancer is right there at, at the front of the line for that, and there have been encouraging results on both fronts. So using a patient's genetic information to pick a drug and seeing improved results, and then also using immunologic therapy even in patients with metastatic disease where we've seen results that we've not seen before. So again, it gives us a lot of excitement that there may be improvements to come in the near future. I think the other thing though that we need to do for bladder cancer research, and this is an effort from the, the clinical investigators as well as ongoing efforts, whether it be from the National Cancer Institute or pharmaceutical sponsors, we need to design our clinical trials so they are accessible to our patients who have this cancer. Many of our patients uh, come with other medical conditions. They may have decreased kidney function, they may have uh, decreased lung function. That is what we see with bladder cancer. And if we exclude half of our patients from being eligible to participate in these trials, then I think we're stalling our, our, our progress. So being able to bring some of these uh, encouraging agents into populations who maybe cannot tolerate agents like cisplatin, I think is gonna be a key for, for our research and our patient community in the years to come. Um, I think some of the immediate impacts are clearly gonna be in terms of grants, pilot grants to bladder cancer researchers looking at innovative ways to attack this disease. But I think down the road, the ripple effect of this um, will be at all of the cancer centers in the world who do bladder cancer research. Um, we are often competitive, and you know, in some ways, um, seeing one institution get a large gift sort of rallies the troops at the local institution to say, hey, let's, let's get bladder cancer on the map as a program at our institution, not just within a GU oncology program. And I think that's essential. Um, Money does talk in terms of research results. We've seen this with disease after disease. If we look at even non-cancer, we look at HIV, Parkinson's, breast cancer, prostate cancer, the, the list goes on and on. It's not the only thing, but it, but it is essential to make it happen. Uh, so I think it is going to be a tremendous benefit for the worldwide bladder cancer community.